Hello, welcome back to Elise Reads and Speaks. Today I am bringing you my December ARCs. These are all the ARCs that I have in my possession from NetGalley that I need to read before their release date. Oh, thankfully, I have much less than I did for my November ARCs because I didn't do well in November. I just didn't. I mean, I read them, except for The Burning God, but it was usually like a day or two after their release date. Hopefully, I do better this month, but we will see. So first on my list is actually released December 1st. It is The Beast of Bellevue by Grace Chen. This one is pitched as a role reversal of Beauty and the Beast, and you know how much I love my fairy tale retellings. So Ava, who I guess plays the Beast instead of Belle in this one, is a patient at Bellevue Insane Asylum. I thought that was a pretty neat twist. And then she connects online with this pair of brothers named Dylan and Alec. I don't really know how that makes them Bell. It sounds more like a love triangle, but you know what? We shall see. Next up on December 8th is Escaping Eleven by Jerry Chisholm. So in this book, it's like a dystopia because the earth was rendered uninhabitable. So all these remaining people had to go underground. So there are floors underground. Whoever lives on the top floor kind of governs the rest of the floors and whoever lives on the way bottom floor is completely miserable, okay? I like stuff like that. So this girl is somewhere in the middle I'm um, guessing floor 11 since it's escaping 11 and whatever floor she's on she needs to fight to survive. I don't know why but it sounds like some dystopia that seems right up my alley. Next up on December 15th is Fae Child by Jane Holly Meisner. Man, I love me some fairy stories. So in this one, the protagonist is eight years old. Her name is Abby. And when she's out in this body of water, I assume like a lake or a pond or something, she looks through and sees a boy looking at her. And that boy pulls her through to the land of the Fae. All right, so in her place, in the mortal world, there's this changeling, and I guess one of her parents believes that it's her, the other parent thinks that something's going on, so he's trying to find Abby on this journey, and I guess it follows her journey in this world of the Fae. So this one is actually pitched as a YA book, even though the character is eight years old, because I saw that the publisher or author's notes said that the next two books in the expected trilogy, it's gonna follow Abby when she's in her teenage years and then in her early 20s. So they wanted to pitch it as YA from the beginning. I'm pretty stoked about that. I, I like books that go on a journey, you know, that we need to see them for a while. And I'm gonna see her when she's eight and then a teenager and then 20s. Well, hopefully I'll wanna go on to the next two books. If I don't think this one's good, I probably won't go on to the next, but I think it's setting it up to be good. So we'll see, we'll see. And then on December 29th, I have two books that are coming out that day. The first one is Fairy Godmothers, Inc. That's by Serena DeWild, and this one seems right up my alley. So there is this town, I believe it's called Ever After. It's a magical little town, and this magic is fueled by love. So all of a sudden, the magic in this town starts to wane, so the, the power is kind of depleting. So the three fairy godmothers decide to make this town into a wedding destination, so they're like pulling in the love into their town and to advertise this place as a new wedding destination I guess their their goddaughter they've talked into fake marrying her ex and like it says longtime ex and I think it was her first true love so you know we kind of know what's gonna happen there that sounds lovely. <laughs> and the second book that I have on December 29th, and also my last arc of the month, is We Thought We Knew You by M. William Phelps. So this one is a nonfiction true crime, and it follows the murder of, I believe her name is Mary Yoder. So she owned this chiropractic office with her husband, and when she got home one day from work, she had like fevers and she was sweating and she was vomiting and then shortly afterwards I mean they took her to the hospital but she died and then the coroner's report came back and said that she was intentionally poisoned so it's kind of like a who did it my bet is on the husband but I guess there's some other family dynamic stuff going on so we shall see so those are all the arcs that I have to read for December. There are five of them. I should be able to get through them all. You know, five, not too big a number. And I'm gonna use this month to get ahead because I realize that I have a bunch in March. And if I wanna read them all by their March dates, man, do I need to start now. All right, anyway, thank you for tuning in to Elise Reads and Speaks. I will catch you next time, guys. Bye.